Thank you, Warden. Very well. These guards will move you to another cell. I'll be back in a little while. Ready, Gordon? Yes, Scott. We're just going to move you to another cell. <laughs> what does it matter? The one you're going to is nearer... <laughs> nearer to the chair, is that it? <laughs> All right. Let's go. All right, Gordon. Walk the left. We'll be right here behind you. Lock the door into this preparation chamber, Pete. Okay. Just a second. All right. Go on through, Gordon. Watch him, Pete. I'll shut the door. Uh, what's the use of all this trouble? What chance have I got now? I'm afraid you haven't got much, fella. Uh, I wouldn't say that. What do you mean? Holy smokes. Look behind you. Where? There. Oh. Well, too bad. I hated to do that, but... There wasn't any other way, and he'll only be out for a while. Now, Gordon, listen to me. Hey, where are you? I can't see you anymore. Where have you gone? Back into the shadow. Now, Gordon, we haven't much time. Listen to me. No crime is perfect. There's always somewhere a loose end. The only reason that all crimes aren't solved is because there's some one fact that someone knows and doesn't tell. And sometimes they don't tell because they don't know that they know. I told everything I know in court. They wouldn't believe me then. Because you couldn't prove what you said. We are going after the proof now. You and I. How? I'm going to think with your mind. I don't know what you mean. Don't try to understand. Just do as I tell you. I want you to concentrate, Gordon. Fix your mind on everything that happened that day. Make mental pictures. I'll see what you see. I'll try. No. No. No, Gordon. Stop thinking about your wife and baby. How did you know I was thinking about that? I them? saw it. In your mind. I see in my mind the pictures you create in yours. Oh, like television? Yes, or like mental telepathy or mind reading, hypnotism, whatever you choose. There's no time to talk. Stop talking. Think. I will. I will. I'm thinking now. The picture is getting clearer. That's better. Go on. The restaurant? The bar? Gordon, stop thinking about the electric chair. It blurs the picture. I'll try. I'll try. Ah. That's better. The car. In front of the bank. Yes. I see it. The policeman. The crowd. Yes. Wait a minute. The small man with red hair. He was the one you called Red. Yes. Yes. I see him. Crooked nose. Short. Glasses. I know that man. He's Red Sloan. I... I... It's hard to see. I know. Think for your life. Try hard. Yes. You started the car. The other, Lefty, was in front with you. Lefty. Lefty. See him for me, Gordon. Ah, uh, yes. A scar on his left cheek. Why didn't you mention that in court? I, I forgot. Never mind. Concentrate. Yes. Yes. Lefty couldn't keep you covered with a gun and look back at the same time. What did he do? He... Reached up and twisted the rear view mirror. Now we've got it. Ah, that's the loose end. That's where his thumbprint will be. Gordon, now I can save you. 
You've told the truth. You didn't know you knew. Right, you're a fool for coming in here again. This is the place we picked up that kid that's burning tonight. What you want to come in here for? This is as good a place as any, ain't it? Hey, telephone for you, Lefty. Telephone? Yeah, maybe you never heard of it, but it's a great invention. But nobody knows I'm here. Well, somebody knows because they're waiting on the phone for you. It's over there on the wall. Okay. Don't be too long, Lefty. Hello? <laughs> Say, what are you laughing at? Who is this? Lefty, did you ever hear of the shadow? Yeah. Say, what is this? Too bad about young Gordon, isn't it, Lefty? What do you know about that? The shadow knows. Who are you? What do you want? I want justice. Justice for Paul Gordon, Lefty. And I'm going to get it. But you ain't got no evidence. No. Perhaps there are some fingerprints, Lefty. Oh, no. We had gloves on. There couldn't be no fingerprints. Did you have gloves on all the time? Yeah, sure. I did. You're left-handed. Now listen carefully, Lefty. When you were sitting in the front seat of Gordon's car, your gun was in your left hand. Remember? Say, you ain't nobody, I. It's just, say... How do you know? What did you do with your right hand? My right hand? You took off your right glove, didn't you? No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, gosh, I'm going nuts. And you couldn't see the car that was chasing you because the angle of the rearview mirror was adjusted for the driver and you weren't driving, so... Do you remember what you did? No, no, I didn't. I didn't take it off. Are you sure you didn't reach up with your bare right hand and turn that rearview mirror? Are you sure, Lefty? No, no, I didn't. I didn't. Maybe I did that. If the police find that fingerprint, you'll burn, Lefty. Just the way young Gordon's going to burn tonight. Goodbye, Lefty. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He hung up. No. No. I won't burn. Hey, Red. Red. It set me gab long enough. Say, who was the guy? Never mind that. Where's that car of Gordon's now? In his garage. I guess I heard his wife. Listen. What? I got a hunch. There's some fingerprints of mine in that car. Red, we got to wipe them off of there or maybe we'll burn in that chair too. Come on, let's go. Commissioner. I'm sorry, Miss Lane, but I don't see what we can do. But I tell you, Paul Gordon is innocent. The men who committed the crime are free. Where did you get this information? Oh, that I can't tell you. Uh, Miss Lane, Paul Gordon was convicted of murder by due processes of law. Tonight he pays for his crime in the electric chair. If the police listened to every crank who came in here claiming new evidence... But they can't send an innocent man to the chair. They can't do it. No, but they can send a guilty man. And according to the evidence, Paul Gordon is guilty. Commissioner, suppose that uh, afterwards, when it's too late, they discover that Paul Gordon wasn't guilty after all. And suppose I testify that the police refused to listen. Well, what do you want me to do? If it's within reason, I'll do that. I want Go you to I... send some men to that garage. I want you to catch the guilty men and see that justice is done. I'm frightened. Brace up, Gordon. It won't be long. Take your chin up, buddy. It's my turn next. <laughs> so long, fella. Good luck. Goodbye, kid. Where, where is he? He promised to save me. Who, son? I don't know. It was a voice. Just a voice. He... He said he'd stand by. Now, steady, old man. Don't lose your nerve, Gordon. Open it up, men. No. I uh, will go in there. I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. I didn't, I tell you. He said he'd stand by. He's warden away. Only a few minutes more. Just a few minutes. Don't take me in there yet. Now, no, wait. Please, please. He said, please wait. Easy, Gordon. 
I'm sorry. And if I go in that door, I'm gone. It'll be too late then. Take him in, men. No, 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 wait. Oh, where are you? Where's that voice? Where did he go? Please come back. Warden. Warden. Wait a minute, men. Well, what is it? Warden, wait. The governor's on the phone. He says stop. Hold up everything. What'd the governor say? He wants to talk to you on the phone, Warden. He says don't electrocute this man. They've got the other two guys in Gordon's garage trying to rub out some fingerprints. One of them was shot and died. But before he died, he spilled it all. This fellow didn't do it. It was a frame-up. Oh, thank God he got me in time. Gordon. Gordon. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes, I heard it. That voice said he would. I'm free. You're not going to electrocute me, Warden. You're not. No. No, Gordon. The governor saved you. Governor? No. It wasn't the governor. It was somebody else. Or something else. But what do you mean, Gordon? Who saved you? I don't know. It was a voice. Just a voice. I never really saw him. He was only... A shadow. Before another adventure with the shadow draws to a close, John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, would like to say a few words. Mr. Barclay. Good evening, friends. If you're interested in having a more comfortable home this winter, be sure to call your local Blue Coal dealer. For he's more than a fuel dealer. He's an authority on modern home heating. You see, for more than six years, I've trained servicemen for these blue coal dealers. These men, known as John Barclay servicemen, have added thousands of families like yours to enjoy a greater degree of comfort and to save heating dollars, too. I'm going to read part of a letter typical of many received from satisfied customers using blue coal and John Barclay service. I quote in part, The service rendered by your John Barclay servicemen has been invaluable to me. We were burning a ton of coal a week and having great difficulty in keeping our fire going throughout the night. Your serviceman made me many helpful suggestions regarding the proper way to regulate the furnace and recommended the use of blue coal. We not only reduced the amount of fuel consumed to one half, but actually got more heat. Think of that, friends. In this case, a family cut their fuel bill in half simply by following the advice of a John Barclay serviceman whose services were given without charge. Now, you don't have to buy blue coal to benefit from John Barclay service. No matter what kind of fuel you're using or from whom you've been buying, if you have any heating problems, consult the blue coal dealer. He'll be very glad to place his John Barclay service man at your disposal to solve your problems. I thank you. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. Real names are never used in these shadow stories. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs>